outside the realm of immediate, deducible, or inducible knowledge possessed by myself, are the potential impacts of the feelings, bonds, and fellowships held by acquainted individuals among my fellow equines of relatively lacking size and stature, onto the events and sequences which shall transpire with the impending passage of time. However, it is within the abilities in my current possession to demonstrate to you, my opponent, a closely approximate depiction of what the state of all known territories would be, given a circumstance in which my own feelings, bonds, and fellowships held between myself and the acquaintances I have encountered are non-existent in absolute terms. Despite the adamancy of the addressed party's attempts to halt me in my many ambitious pursuits, I trust that you, given your previous assertion, are cognizant of the exact location of the setting in which we find ourselves in this circumstance, and confident that your allegedly just and pure temperament will preclude you from prevaricating to me in your response, I thus inquire as to the whereabouts in which we immediately find ourselves stationed. In responding to your remark, I find that it is sufficient to express our location in a chronological sense, as opposed to a physical location, for, in fact, we may not have ventured anywhere closer to or away from any single point in space which we had previously occupied. We exist in the midst of a timeline which has followed from a previous event, which would be the exact instance in which we previously found ourselves. I had apprehended that there was, indeed, a change in our chronological placement. However, the starkness of the vicinity and its quality of being devoid of activity attributable to any being sustaining life functions are baffling to me, considering certain presumptions about predicted timelines made on the behalf of the speaker. Although I had conceived optimistic notions about what would transpire, the dismal and desolate environment in which we find ourselves, in actuality, had already dawned on me as a logical conclusion, for I have perceived, from following the timelines which the opposing party has thrusted me into following, a pattern of augmenting exacerbation among the situations and physical settings. Indeed, I had not determined the exact extent to which the world in which we live is dependent on the existence of the acquaintances belonging to me, which I prefer to label as especially and platonically cherished and intimate, and myself, and the fact remains that I am still unaware of the reasoning, justification, or intention as to the placement of such cosmic gravity in us. However, another truth remains. This is the ordinance issued from the authorities which govern our destinies. I state that I will entertain no amount of credence for the postulation which you have previously put forth. I entreat you, the relatively diminutive equine possessing the moniker Starlight, to heed the utterances emitted from my companion and behold with your optical organs the grievous and gusting desolation in the visually perceptible zone nearest to you. Consistent with warnings previously issued by me, I postulate that each and every happening retains a quality of achieving consequences in due time, despite whatever wisdom may indicate as to what can be inferred to have nugatory effects. It follows that as dramatic and earth-shattering an aberration from the intended course of things as is that which you currently are striving to actualize should result in a universe which bears the features of our immediate environment. Knowledge and estimation serve to tell me that the abilities and strategies which I possess are inadequate to forcibly cease the operation that you are currently undertaking. However, it had been a suspicion I had entertained that you might be dissuaded from continuing on your current course if this utterly despondency-inducing sight were vividly and freshly introduced to your mind. Indignant and astonished at the temerity of your disclosure that you had actually entertained the notion of moving me to dissolve my plans in the midst of their execution without first considering the entrenchment and deliberation that were required to bring my person to initiate this highly complicated state of affairs, I repeat the wording of your utterance in a tone which conveys the emotions you evoked in me with your exact remark. 
Verily, it is apparent from your conception of that abhorrent notion that you are wholly oblivious as to the experiences and contemplations which have motivated me to take precisely the actions which I have made, and precise manners and means which I utilized to make them. Indeed, I feel compelled to mention, in light of your ignorance, that I had been experiencing a state of totally consuming and unfettered contentedness over the span which preceded the obliteration of my actualized ambitions, which so happened to be caused by the fellowship that had consisted of the addressed party and the individuals you associate with and hold in vaulted regard. As you have suspected, in no reach of my vast recollection are the facts regarding the occurrences which inspired and compelled you to construct your self-contained community with grouped buildings for habitation located in a rural area and to assimilate your fellow equines lacking in size into a cultish doctrine in which the possession of symbols on one's haunches bearing an indication of having found one's calling in life is held in disdain. Additionally, replete with regret am I when I regard the fact that fate was so unkind as to bestow the task of annihilating your aspirations upon my dear acquaintances and myself. I sense that in you there exists some degree of curiosity as to what could possibly have installed the beliefs and persuasions which moved me to venture forth with this diabolical procedure despite the unquantifiable risks which lay before me, and thus inquire as to whether the desire to become aware of it without personally inviting a response from you in a fashion which various individuals bestow with the substantive rhetorical question. Since in all likelihood I have never had the chance to impart the circumstances which wrought my ardent motivations, and it is entirely within my magical knowledge and capacities to present these facts to you in a form which can be witnessed, I will take it upon myself to manifest the very changes required to effect a demonstration.